Okay. Uh, welcome everyone to uh, tonight's conference. My name is Laura Saf. I'm a faculty member at New York University Abu Dhabi, and I will be the moderator for tonight's event. Um, before I introduce our speaker, Franck Mermier, let me say a few words about the context of this event. Tonight's talk is the conclusive keynote for the conference Culture Made in Arabia, which was organized by Clio Chavneau from Sorbonne University Abu Dhabi, Frédéric Lagrange from CEFREPA, the French Center for Research on the Arabian Peninsula, and myself, with the invaluable, and we won't say this enough, uh, logistical organization from the NYUAD Institute team. So over the past three days, we heard from 31 speakers over seven panels, and tonight is the last one of three keynote conferences. Participants were invited to explore the Arabian Peninsula as a new major player on the Arab cultural scene. And by new player, we did not seek to imply that the region had not been an active participant in this scene before the contemporary period. Rather, we meant to shed light on how this role has significantly shifted um, roughly since the turn of the 21st century, with the help of considerable capital and investments on the part of the Gulf states, but also as it increasingly became a space for the production of cultural and artistic works, which are now exported around the region. And indeed, over these past few days, we have heard about how works of literary fiction, music, cinema, fine arts, but also television programs and social media trends, from high-end cultural productions to commercial pop culture, have shaped a distinct Khaliji identity. We've discussed how this identity has been constructed in relation to various others, the migrant communities who compose a significant proportion and for some a majority of the Gulf's population, as well as the various historical worlds within which the region has been embedded, from the Indian Ocean world to Western pop culture and categories of elite cultural taste. And of course, it's the relationship of the region to the pan-Arab cultural field. And so it is this relationship that tonight's conference uh, invites us to explore further by questioning, and I quote the title, the Arab cultural field between national arenas and cultural pan-Arabism. Indeed, Franck Mermier is a prominent French specialist of this Arab cultural field. He is an anthropologist and a senior researcher at the CNRS, the French Research Center, uh, sorry, the French Center for National Research, and currently a member of the French Institute of Anatolian Studies in Istanbul, IFEA, where he is conducting a project on Syrian intellectuals uh, in Turkey. The story of his extensive research experience is recounted in his last book, Hessie de Ville d'Aden à Beirut, which could be translated as uh, a tale of two cities uh, from Aden to, uh, to Beirut, which retraces his interest for urban societies and cultural productions in the Arab world. An interest that took him from the Souk of Sana'a in Yemen, where he also directed the French Research Center for Yemeni Studies, to the port of Aden, and then to Beirut, where he directed another French research center at uh, IFPO. It is from there that he also conducted a project on Arab publishing, which gave way to um, his uh, previous book published in 2005, called Le Livre et la Ville. Indeed, books are at the center of Frank Mermier's work, as he has also directed several translation projects in social sciences from Arab to French, the most recent one, one being Écrit de Syrie, an edited volume of texts by Syrian writers, scholars, and journalists uh, about the ongoing war. And so before leaving him the floor, I just wanted to say that this conference has also uh, a personal connotation for me. There are few mentors who have uh, the kindness, the generosity, and the competence to modify uh, the way you do research, uh, see the world, and overall influence your academic career. And for me, Franck Mermier, who was uh, my PhD advisor, has been uh, one of these persons. Uh, Thank you again for this front, and I, it is a great pleasure for me to welcome you in uh, my current university, NYU Abu Dhabi, and I leave you the floor for your talk. Um, many thanks, uh, Laura, for these kind words, um, and uh, many thanks for all the, also the organize, organizers of this uh, conference, uh, Clio, Frédéric, and Laura, uh, for inviting me to give uh, this keynote uh, lecture. And uh, I would like to say that this conference has been uh, most stimulating and I learned a lot uh, during these three days. Um, so in this presentation, I wish uh, to address the question of the constituents and the modalities of existence of an Arab cultural space uh, in the shifting and evolving context of relations between 
regional and national public spheres. Uh, I propose for discussion uh, some reflections from my investigations uh, from my investigations into Arab publishing, Arab cultural foundations, the public sphere and the city, which in my view represent some uh, characteristics of this Arab space. Uh, a first remark concerning the denomination of the Arab sp uh, space, which is correlated to the notion of cultural area that periodically resurfaces either to redefine it to deconstruct it or to, uh, or to even to suppress it. In fact, the question of defining the cultural area must be closely associated with the contextualization process thus, uh, that uh, all research, research implies and leads, according to the French sociologist Bernard Lahir, to discover, I quote, the relevant ensembles, ensembles in which the action of individuals is inscribed. This will make possible to settle the question of the accusations of uh, essentialism that are sometimes attached to the notion of cultural area while respecting the necessary consideration of the emic meanings of cultural ensembles. The naming of a cultural and geographical entity is not just a matter, matter of academic definition. It has political and ideological dimensions, which often lead to stereotypes or implicit identification, both, both in self-definitions and in external denominations. In the early 80s, 1980s, the Moroccan sociologist, Mor uh, Abdelkabir Khatibi, uh, questioning the meaning of the name Arab, uh, isolated, isolated two meanings one relating to the idea of a completed civilization, and the other designating, designating a war of naming and ideologies that bring to light the active plurality of the Arab world. In this sense, the expression Arab world, uh, commonly used in Arabic and other languages, uh, underlies a somewhat, uh, somewhat monolithic a uh, monolithic vision that prevents the full diversity and plurality of this composite whole from being discerned. For this reason, the notion of Arab space, which I first used in relation to the Arab media sphere in a book published in 2002, um, New Media uh, in uh, the Arab Space, uh, seems more appropriate than that of the Arab world in the sense that it avoids the connotation of a closed universe and includes Arab spaces outside the Arab world. The terms Arab region and Arab space implicitly recognize the existence of dynamics at the regional level while incorporating this ensemble into a global world. They suggest a certain neutrality with respect to the assumptions that accompany implicitly or explicitly uh, those are terms. The existence of an Arab region that emerged before and after decolonization was based on the political, economic, human, and cultural relations that were established between its different components, but also on shared ideational links. Uh, the constitution of a regional entity, uh, despite the failure of both political pan-Arabism and some of its regional organization, was, uh, was also based on the identific identification with a cultural entity uh, in which language forms the backbone alongside other heritages and projects that are the subject of consensus or dissensus, particularly on the political level. To borrow an idea from uh, Charles Tripp's forward to Sylvia Ferraboli's book on Arab uh, regionalism, I quote, the discursive practices make possible the existence of the Arab region, end of quote. And so it can be argued that this Arab region exists as a performative space of, of representation and action. Its existence can also be identified through the, phenomen through the phenomenon of the Arab book fairs, which uh, have become, since the 1990s, 
the main places for the dissemination and marketing of the Arab book. They show, these Arab book fairs, the articulation in the field of uh, books of the national and, Russian and regional markets through their mode of organization. They are held according to an annual calendar, which was established over time after the Cairo Book Fair was held in 1969. The organization of an annual fair takes into account, account the other fairs held in the main capitals of the Arab world. The book fairs reflects also the domination of Arab Middle Eastern publishers over uh, North African ones, because the latter are much less represented in the Arab Middle East fairs. This is also a regional organization mode, mode to which the union of uh, Arab publishers has contributed and which allow publishers with an Arab market to be represented and publishers with a mainly national distribution to increase their visibility at the national and regional levels. With the exception of Beirut, book fairs are, are organized by state administrations, and they serve as a cultural showcase for political authorities to regularly display their commitment to the promotion of the Arab book, language, and culture. The book retains its symbolic value even if its commercial one has decreased during the last decades. Since independence, and in a contrast, contrasting manner, depending on the country, national cultural fields have been formed by drawing on both, both local reference horizons and those belonging to a more or less consensual Arab cultural heritage. At the same time as mass schooling and the Arabization of education have developed, as well as the diffusion of a standard Arabic language and the intensification of exchanges between the different countries, which allow, allow this use to spread par particularly through the media and the constitution of a pan-Arab intelligentsia. While different Islamic and Islamist spheres with their own cultural references flourish. If the expression Arab culture in the singular is often used within the Arab space, it suggests the existence of a shared, shared, shared reference base, but conceals the extent to which this differs from one society to another and may be subject to contestation. We can thus mention the more or less strong pressure, uh, presence, sorry, of the Islamic dimension in this constitution, according to each Arab country, uh, but also to take into consideration the national cultural dynamics, which according to the various temporalities of the different historical and political processes were inspired by the different cultural, uh, local cultural scenes, which were metamorphosed in return. In passing, mention should be made here of the various uh, processes of public policies of heritage with their varied and selective treatments, treatment of elements of the past, which have been closely linked to processes of political legitimization. It should be also noted that the degree of exposure to external influences and the manner in which they are relayed within societies are essential factors in the creation and reconfiguration of Arab cultures. In this sense, cities such as Cairo and Beirut have experienced, have experienced an earlier complex, complexification of socioeconomic organization, registers of norms and values and reference systems to use the criteria proposed by Robert Ridfield and Milton Singer in, the, in their study, The Cultural Role of Cities. These cities have been, and more or less have remained, uh, hotbeds of technological and cultural innovation due to the massive presence of expressive specialists who create or disseminate new cultural forms. The anthropologist Ulf uh, Annertz has identified the presence of expressive specialists in the world cities as a criterion for their role as cultural markets. 
as places of uh, diversity and cultural crystallization, Cairo and Beirut have played an important role in mediating between the regional and international levels, particularly in the cultural field. field. The formation of a modern Arab culture cannot be dissociated from the relations of dependence and domination within an area sharing a common written language. The respective contribution of the different centers of gravity within the Arab region to cultural production is also measured by their strength of diffusion and influence outside the national space. In this sense, the anteriority in the process of civilizational and linguistic modernization, com commonly referred to as the Nahda or Arab Renaissance, is a determining factor that is also combined with the pre preservation of a certain cultural openness, vitality, and diversity. It is also likely to be combined, albeit in a fluctuating uh, manner, depending on the period, with a cl climate, climate of political, social, and cultural liberalism, which pushes back the limits of freedom of expression and thus reinforces the regional centrality of the country that benefits from it. In the first half uh, of the 20th century, Egypt, Egypt's cultural influence at the Pan-Arab level was paradoxically linked to the affirmation, affirmation of an Egyptian cultural nationalism with uh, sinuous contours oscillating, oscillating between different references uh, pharaonic, Islamic, Arab, and Western. The role of print in the modernization of the Arabic language has, has been crucial, as well as contributing greatly to the formation, uh, formation of an Arab public sphere, of which Cairo was one of the most important centers of gravity. Since the end of the 19th century, Cairo has become the capital of the book and press in the Arab uh, region, even though to varying degrees, Printing has spread to other, part, uh, other parts of the Arab region, particularly Damascus, Beirut, and uh, elsewhere. Egyptian printing and publishing houses were for decades the main supplier, suppliers to the Arab market before the nationalization of the cultural sec sector under Nasser's regime in the early 1960s. The book industry that took off in Beirut thus benefited from the restrictions of, on freedom of expression put in place uh, in Egypt and in most Arab countries. Putting aside the cultural, uh, role of Kuwait, uh, cultural role of Kuwait in the 1960s, other cities in the Arabian Peninsula developed in the years 2000 the power of attraction for Arab intellectual and cultural resources with the objectives of asserting their soft power and a preeminent role on the Pan-Arab scale. The question is whether their role will be limited to that of a trans transitory hub of cultural flows, or whether they will be transformed into places of cultural creation based on an urban and cultural sedimentation that will develop through the recognition of the creative force of their own cosmopolitanisms. Over the past three decades, there have, been joint, there have been joint developments that manifest both a paradigm, paradigm uh, shift regarding the evolution of the notion of Pan-Arabism and the emergence of new regional uh, centralities for the promotion of cultural Pan-Arabism. It is interesting to note that the book fairs in the Arabian Peninsula, such as those in Riyadh, Abu Dhabi, Sharjah, and Kuwait, are now among the most important in the Arab world uh, uh, Arab region after Cairo, and that in Abu Dhabi and Sharjah in particular, the emphasis, uh, emphasis has been placed on the professionalization of the fairs in order to show the adherence to international standards. Indeed, one of the major phenomena of recent years is the important role played by some Gulf countries in, in the promotion of Arab culture and translation, uh, notably through the creation of prizes and the launching, launching of major translation, uh, major translation projects. The translation for, of foreign works into Arabic 
is, is also presented as serving to enrich, uh, I quote, the Arab library, and thus for all Arabs. It is not a coincidence that many projects of libraries, manuscripts collections, uh, historical dictionaries of the Arabic language, such as uh, Doha Historical Dictionary and Af of Arabic language, uh, were launched in the Arabian Peninsula with the aim of compiling Arab culture and heritage as a way of appropriating it through accumulation and collection. This phenomenon reveals that the affirmation of cultural nationalism requires, uh, requires the adoption of a cultural and educational role on an Arab regional scale, even though the political ideology of pan-Arabism is no longer a mobilizing uh, factor. Uh, let us mention the cultural, cent uh, cultural center of gravity that has gradually emerged in the United Arab Emirates in the fields of book and the promotion of Arab culture. One can thus uh, mention, as it has already been mentioned, the UNESCO Charger Prize for Arab Culture, which was established in 1998. Uh, why in Abu Dhabi, new initiatives were launched to give the Emirates an educational and cultural uh, centrality with the Sheikh Zayed Book Prize established in 2006, the International Prize for Arabic Fiction in, in 2008, and as well as the Kalima Translation Program, which has resulted in the publication of 1,012 titles until, uh, until 2020. In May uh, 2015, the first edition of the Qatara Prize for the Arab Novel was held in Doha, and it is also worth noting that uh, noting the important place taken by Qatar in the field of social, social sciences and translation in the region. Between 2011 and 2021, of the 427 books published by the Qatari Arab Center for Research and Policy Studies, 97 were translations, mainly from English and French. In June 2014, the Ministry of Culture of Bahrain launched the, the Transfer of Knowledge Project directed by the former director of the Arab Organization for Translation, Taha Labib, in Beirut. The goal of the project is to translate into Arabic uh, outstand, outstanding works of social and human, in, in social and human sciences. From the early years, 2000, numerous centers and, and institutes were created. They adopted, they adopted, sorry, from the out, outset, a regional perspective by focusing on the promotion of Arab culture or Arab thought. Both established expressions that are found in the names, the names of these institutions, such as Muassasat al-Fikr al-Arabi or Arab Fund for Arab Culture. With the example of Arab, Arab cultural foundations, we can see the persistence of the legitimation, legitimization through the existence of an Arab entity. It is not worthy to draw a parallel between the Center for Arab, uh, for Arab Unity Studies uh, created in 1975 in Beirut and the Arab Center for Research and, Polit and Policy Studies created in Qatar, Qatar in 2011 both aiming at, at attracting, attracting Arab intellectuals around the idea of Pan-Arabism, Pan but the former, the Center for Arab Unity Studies, was based on uh, Arab nationalist ideology, while the latter, um, headed by the Palestinian intellectual Asbi Bishara, is more critical of older versions of Arab nationalism. The fact that one was the, the that one was set up in Beirut and the other in Doha is also a reflection of new, general, uh, new regional uh, power relations. But Beirut keeps its role uh, as a kind of neutral free zone, uh, free cultural zone, with its hosting of the, uh, with the hosting of the headquarters of cultural foundations, such as the Mwafsasat al-Fikr al-Arabi, already mentioned, the Arab Ford Foundation, the Arab Fund for Arab Culture and Al Maori the Thakafi Cultural Resource, which were was forced cultural Al Maori the Thakafi was forced to move uh, to Beirut from Cairo. 
The Arab Center for Research and Policy Studies in Qatar plays an important role in the production of social sciences in the Arab world, the Arab world uh, region, especially in the field of political science, and as a tool for uh, the cultural and political diplomacy of Qatar. It is a subsidiary of Fadat Media, a private company set up in Doha in 2012, and also registered in the United Kingdom, which owns a newspaper such as Al Arab Il Jadid, New Arab, uh, television such as Al Arabi, uh, or TV Syria, in, uh, now uh, launched in, uh, in Istanbul, as well as media companies and online news sites such as Al Modon in, uh, in Lebanon, for example. If cultural pan Arabism is a real realm for increased competitions in the fields of culture, language, and book diplomacy between different state cultural diplomacies, we can also find an alternative cultural pan Arabism embraced by some of the non governmental organizations dedicated to promoting artists, such as uh, that of Al Moreda Thakafi, the Arab Fund for Arab Culture, which recognize the mosaic nature of Arab cultures, but operates at the Arab level. A recognition that tends to subvert the incantations of institutionalized pan-Arabism and its pretension to uh, hegemony and homogenization. It could be argued that uh, one of the characteristics of this Arab cultural space is that it is tra traversed by a double process, that of a regionalization of the cultural and media scene, where the diffusion of standard Arabic is combined with the development of new technologies, and that of the affirmation, but also the diversification of national cultural and media scene. Uh, since, with in particular, the recourse to dialect in the national media and even in the pan Arab sphere. The development of Arab media fields, satellite television, internet, and social networks has shaken up hierarchies and multiplied uh, the spaces of visibility for many artists from different Arab countries. The former centrality of Cairo has dissipated in favor of an artistic and musical polycentrism that reflects both the rise of cultural localisms and the opening up of the pan-Arab cultural field to new actors from societies, pre societies previously considered peripheral to the centers of cultural creation. The, the use of dialect in television and the proliferation of local media incurred in regional or national reality thus coexist with the densification of the transnational and pan-Arab character of media fields. The major satellite channels by designing their programs for an Arab audience have contributed to shaping, shaping a pan-Arab mass culture carried, carried by cultural uh, carried by cultural industries. Thus, the particularly popular music shows on satellite channels, uh, such as Star Academy on the LBC channel or uh, Arab Idol on the MBC channel, staged inter-Arab uh, competition while relying on common cultural references. The large pan-Arab media groups, mostly owned by uh, businessmen, fr uh, businessmen from the Arabian Peninsula, have also been the vectors of the productions of uh, the US media giants by ad adapting them to the different particularities of the Arab market. Beyond this media field, media field controlled by economic and political powers, uh, there are many alternative cultural scenes uh, that touch, touch all forms of expression, from literature to the, to the visual arts. One of the major phenomena uh, of the years 2000 is the rise of the novel genre, which has spread throughout the Arab countries and has been encouraged, encouraged also by the emergence of literary prizes in the Gulf countries. The writing of fiction is, however, affected by the social issues and political context, uh, context of the various Arab societies, but also has become a, a means 
of expressing new subjectivities. For example, according to uh, the anthropologist, Saudi anthropologist, by the way, Rashid's study, uh, Kingdom Without Borders, Saudi uh, Arabia's political uh, religion and uh, media frontiers, the large number of novels written by women in Saudi Arabia, often published outside the kingdom for reasons of uh, censorships, um, attest to the massive appropriation of the genre for the expression of the intimate. In war-torn countries, such as Syria, Iraq, and Yemen, for example, the flowering of the novels the, of the novel is directly linked to the needs to account for, for and make sense of the phenomenon of violence. Literature has also become the preferred, preferred mode of expression for the need to be a witness in contexts marked by the confiscation, confiscation of the national narrative by authoritarian regimes. Thus, the Saudi anthropologist Bakader, in a book on anthropology in the Arab world, co-authored with the Moroccan anthropologist Hassan Rashi, Hassan Rashi, noted that over the past three decades, more and more Arab novels, uh, I quote, resemble ethnographic studies and give an account of the social and cultural aspect of our societies, end of quote, and consider them a documentary so source to be exploited. Beyond the scope uh, and modalities of the reception of this literature, we can, also, however, however, ask the question of the role of these national literary productions in the reinforcement of national cultural fields, which can be observed through the increasing numbers, increasing number, sorry, of private publishers in most of the Arab countries since the 1990s. We can also ask ourselves to what extent the literary prizes I just mentioned have integrating effects on the Arab cultural field, in particular, with the growing share of novel, uh, novels from the Gulf and from uh, North, North Africa in recent years. When Farouk Mandambe and Elias Sambar use the expression Arab cultural field in their book, uh, publish, uh, Being Arab, published in French in 2005, they were referring uh, to the formation, formation of an Arab intelligentsia and a, an Arab literary field, which is certainly not contrary to, contradictory with the existence of national uh, literary fields. Transposed to the Arab national cultural scenes, Giselle Sapiro's considerations on the notion of the national uh, cultural field in the Bourdieu sense, uh, confirm how problematic the reference to the national framework, framework alone is. This internationalization of the literary field thus emerges from the fact that national borders do not intersect with linguistic borders. If we simply take the criterion of the existence of specific uh, and senses of consecration that differentiates the field from the market, as uh, it has been stated by Sapiro, we note that these instances, instances had in the different Arab countries a transnational character due to their anchorage in different poles of the Arab space and their connections to the globalized space. By insisting also on the transnational dimensions of the Arab cultural field, Felix, Felix Lang in his article, Beauty, Goodness and Bombs, the role of political crisis in structuring the Arab fields of cultural productions, points, points out the important role played by the political crisis, crisis in, the, in its structuring. In the Syrian case, for example, the massive phenomenon of the forced displacement of millions of Syrians from their country and their dispersion in uh, Turkey, Lebanon, and Europe, mainly uh, in Germany, has accentuated the transnational dimension of the Syrian cultural field, considering that a large part of, this, of the Syrian cultural, of Syrian cultural production is created outside the national territory. In Yemen, the war has, the war has led 
to the breakdown, uh, breakdown of cultural institutions, to the increased fragmentation of the Yemeni public sphere, and the role, new role played by exile in the reconfiguration of the cultural scenes for some Yemeni intellectuals and artists. If I quote, uh, according to Giselle Sapiro, a transnational history underpins the formation of this, these uh, national fields, end of quote, which has often, often tended to be overlooked, overlooked, we must also add another criterion to be taken into account, account in the externalization of certain constituents of a cultural field, uh, that of the dialectic of censorship in authoritarian regimes, which, as the American historian Robert Darton uh, analyzed, is, I quote, a system of control which pervades institutions, colors human relations, and reaches into the hidden workings of the soul, end of quote. The system of censorship has consequences not only for cultural production in the strict sense, but also for the transnational correct character of the cultural field. Since the need to circumvent uh, the constraints of uh, censorship encourages the exploitation of differences existing in the Arab region with regard, regard to freedom of expression. And this in the context of repressive states that exercise strong censorship in the cultural field. Censorship is modulated according to the periods and registers of expression and within the context of a pan Arab field of cultural goods. The shifting and cyclical, uh, cyclical practice of different censorships, uh, censorships in Arab countries according to internal and external uh, political power relations contributes to the permanent reconfiguration of an Arab space of cultural circulation. In the Arab region, the three taboos of the censor, religion, politics, politics, and sex, are expressed in different ways depending on the country and the, its degree of liberalism. The existence of, relatives, of relative free zones of cultural productions makes it possible to bypass national boundaries and censorship constraints namely in the field of book production, for, for example. The regional market, especially the Arab publishing system, is continually structured by the contrast between and shifting importance of different national censorship regulations, giving rise to avoidance or, avoidance or bypass strategies that make use of free zone with variable scope and amplitude. For, example, for instance, in the Arabian Peninsula, uh, Bahrain constitute, uh, a free zone, constitutes a free zone relative to, uh, to Saudi Arabia. On a larger scale, Beirut surpasses the Egyptian capital as the cultural free zone of the region uh, due to the strength of its publishing scene, uh, which uh, is oriented towards the demands of the Arab market. The minor role played by the Lebanese state in the cultural field, in contrast to the important one played by the other Arab states, uh, combined with the liberalism and weakness of its political regime, uh, which has enabled, uh, enabled to, the, to the emergence of a proxy pan-Arab public sphere in, in Beirut. In the 70s, uh, 1970s, Beirut was gradually transformed into the public sphere of the Arab world by giving exposure to numerous uh, Arab authors who, who would have failed to get access to the Arab market as they, be, they had been published in their own countries, as well as, as well as by publishing books which would have been censored in many Arab countries. As a consequence of Arab uprising, uprisings, wars, political turmoil, and the alliance between the Ankara and Doha regimes, Turkey has now joined the Arab cultural and media space with the creation of an Arab media and cultural scene, particularly in Istanbul. This explains the, this explains the limited autonomy 
uh, of this Arab space uh, of this Arab space from the political realm, while his dependence on continuous continuously moving regional context constitutes a, a threat to his future. Nevertheless, this cultural and media scene plays a significant role in some Arab national uh, public spheres, notably Syrian and Yemeni, and contributes to reconfiguring them out of Istanbul. Uh, in conclusion of this talk, it, could, it can be argued that what constitutes the Arab cultural space is a system of relationships, interdependencies, hierarchies, complementarities, and decalage, which is in constant motion due to internal and external power relations, as well as to the nature and density of interactions of its different components at the regional and international levels. It's in this ever-changing dynamic, this cultural space is formed by an urban archipelago urban archipelago that links cities within and outside the Arab region through, uh, through interconnections in, a, in an agonistic framework. The, dis, uh, the discrepancies in the various uh, Arab national public spheres govern their interactions. To use uh, levi strauss definition of identity as virtual foyer, foyer virtuel, uh, Arab culture exists as a kind of virtual uh, center and also as a value guiding public policies on the regional scale. The conflicts uh, surrounding its definition, as well as the competition of Arab cultural policies, revitalize continuously its performative existence, uh, creating both change and permanence. Thank you for you listening. Thank you very, very much for listening. Thank you very much, uh, Frank, for this very stimulating and, uh, and exciting talk, which I think is a perfect uh, conclusive talk for our conference. Uh, so to all attendees, feel free to write any questions you might have in the Q&A box. And to start, uh, to kick off the, the discussion, um, I'll start with, I'll take my privilege as a moderator to, uh, to ask uh, the first question. I wanted to come back on the very interesting observation you made that um, national affirmation in the Arabian Peninsula required a form of cultural pan-Arabism, right? Or had this uh, required uh, the collection and the inscription uh, into an Arab heritage. And I was wondering if current developments in the region, uh, both in the cultural field and in the geopolitical field, can be understood as a turn away from this necessary cultural pan-Arabism. So for example, if we think about um, recent developments in the UAE, uh, whether uh, the hosting of the Universal Exhibi Exhibition, the Expo 2020 in Dubai, or the normalization of uh, the relationship with Israel, does it make this cultural pan-Arabism more marginalized? Or is it still sort of essential to how Gulf countries present themselves on the global stage? Uh, Yes, uh, thank you for this question because it's very important to, 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 to perhaps to define the scope of this uh, cultural pan-Arabism. I think it's always a way to, to legitimize, uh, I mean, the national uh, sphere, uh, the national cultural scene, the national cultural sphere, and also the, um, also the regimes, I mean, the political regimes to have a, a, a kind of um, action and a public policy on the Arab scale. That still uh, remains a, a factor of legitimization for for these regimes, I think, um, and and we uh, and perhaps we can also uh, make comparison with the the role of uh, of uh, Egypt before, uh, uh, um, uh, which was linked uh, with his uh, political uh, role during the Nasser regime, and now the the cultural panarism. Uh, and Arabism is completely dissociated from uh, Arab ideology of unity, but still remains a, a factor of legitimization uh, at the regional level. When we speak uh, of the um, Gulf uh, countries, with or we, we stress upon the, the fact that they are uh, 
uh, trying to, to be connected uh, with the international scale, with the globalized space, with the, um, that they are stressing upon the, the interconnection, uh, the, sorry, the global interconnections more than the, the regional scale. And I think that the, all these literary prizes, all these uh, endeavors, uh, efforts to, 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 to collect and to, uh, to make museum, to build museum and also to, to build uh, uh, libraries and uh, also to, to engage in uh, translation projects. All that uh, uh, can um, be uh, uh, understood uh, uh, and um, through the, the lenses of this uh, uh, legitimization uh, factor of uh, being present and active uh, in the, uh, on the Arab scale. And it is not contradictory with the, the process of uh, normalization with Israel, for example, because it is uh, completely uh, dissociated from the uh, Arab nationalist uh, ideology. That's, uh, I think, the main point. Thank you very and because much. And so, because also they have the, the, the economic resources to, to engage in this kind of policies of cultural diplomacies, which was which is not um, more the, the case for other Arab countries. But um, uh, and uh, it's interesting also to, to see uh, through the, the non governmental um, for, uh, cultural foundations that the, the, the level, the Arab level, the Arab scale is still also a, um, a scope uh, to, to intervene in the regional level. Um, and, uh, but uh, through the recognition also of uh, di diversity and uh, through the recognition also of, uh, um, of uh, individual, individual expressions, with, uh, I mean, the stress is more on, on, on the, the accent is more on the, on the individual levels. But and also on the plurality and, and and diversity of the societies, but the scale is is the same also. Thank you. Um, that actually uh, ties in well with the one of the questions we have in the Q and A, which is by um, Dominique Cobet, who first uh, thanks you for the this paper and um, who says that she's wondering if you could tell us more about the alternative scenes in the Middle East. Uh, underground music, street arts, etc., and how this might compare to the very important NIDA movement in Morocco uh, from 2005 and their national versus pan-Arabic implantation. And I guess a follow-up question to that would be, are these alternative scenes national or are there also some pan-Arab uh, alternative scenes? Um, I think that um, it shows that we can see uh, that through the, the, I'm not a specialist of uh, all these underground, scene, uh, underground scenes, but uh, what, uh, what I can, we, we can see that there, there is a um, 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 local implantation of these uh, underground, underground uh, scenes, uh, cultural scenes, uh, very, they, they are very local in the sense that they are uh, also uh, using, for example, uh, dialects, uh, the dialects, the Darija for, 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 and Dominique Kobe knows better than me that uh, the, the place of uh, Darija um, for, the, for the Moroccans. Uh, but the, 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 and they also we can uh, perhaps, and Frederic can perhaps uh, uh, tell more about uh, the use of dialect also in, in Egypt, but, and there is also a lot of uh, debates about uh, the use of dialect in Egypt or in Morocco and other countries, the recognitions of uh, local dialects. And it goes also with the fact that this, uh, the, the use of new artistic expressions, uh, it's a way also to, to subvert also the, the old forms of uh, artistic expression, of cultural expression. And it's also used to uh, express uh, localities, if I can say this, I can use this word. Uh, localities in the sense that uh, it is legitimate to be, uh, to refer to, uh, to an horizon, uh, to a local horizon, which is also um, spread through a new uh, form of artistic expressions. But it doesn't, it is, I think that we must always um, uh, take into consideration that the Arab pan uh, the, the, the pan Arab uh, scale is always uh, uh, functioning. I mean, it's always uh, um, uh, being to effect 
through the fact that there is there are also uh, communications and connections between uh, uh, many uh, young artists and uh, or writers from all over the Arab world that they, 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 they constitute also networks uh, which uh, must go through uh, a common language. And this common language can be artistic uh, forms, uh, can be also the standard Arabic, uh, it can be also the fact that they, everybody, uh, everyone recognizes uh, the, the use of uh, uh, his own dialect. I mean, there is many forms, but there is a kind of subversion that can be also operate at the Arab scale. Uh, uh, and it is not contradictory with also the fact that many uh, in, in, the, in Yemen or in Morocco or in Egypt and uh, in Syria also um, concentrate uh, on the um, on the uh, on the national sphere, but for uh, many different reasons. I think that, for example, uh, now in the context of Syria, uh, with uh, more than uh, uh, five million uh, Syrians outside the country and many intellectuals and artists, I mean the 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 fact that they, there is a um, objective to reconstruct a kind of a national scene uh, outside uh, Syria. Uh, cultural uh, national scene outside Syria um, is completely different from the the Yemeni um, uh, from the uh, from the fact fight of the Yemeni uh, intellectual or the fight of the uh, Moroccan artist. We which uh, I think the context, the political context, is very important in 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 the, for for understanding uh, also uh, the the components and the nature of the national cultural scenes. Thank you very much. Um, I, I really liked what you said about social media and that's very consistent with uh, some of my observations about like a lot of these, um, of the posts on Instagram, on TikTok, etc., are actually about linguistics or are about comparison between dialects precisely because there are places where um, people who still have, uh, people still follow sort of uh, regional influences, right, people from the same region, but because they come from different linguistic backgrounds, there's actually a lot of content produced around the, around this question. Uh, I think Frederick has a question related to that. Uh, well, actually, I wanted to piggyback on what you are remarking, Laura, and what on what Franck said and what uh, Dominique Kobe was asking. Uh, I have a feeling that the Gulf economic El Dorado had a direct effect on linguistic Panarabism. One of the first thing one remarks when watching shows made in the Gulf is how pluriglossic they are. And as a linguist or a person loving linguistics, I am wondering to which extent we can consider that this very recent polyglossic nature of pop shows like the voice that Frank mentioned and uh, and such, or fiction that is broadcasted on satellite television controlled by Gulf Capital mirrors the polyglossic reality of communication in the Gulf region. Ever since Arabic speakers from everywhere came to work here and actually managed to understand each other with just the help of some linguistic leveling. I mean, 80 years ago, one thought that in order for a cultural production to be understood, it had to speak either standard Arabic or Cairo dialect, uh, because Egyptian functioned for half a century as a Pan-Arabic dialect, to which Levantine was later added. The idea 80 years ago was that if everybody spoke their own dialect, no one would understand the film or the TV serial or the show. But the experience of actual communication happening in the Gulf region on a daily basis with some leveling happening between Moroccans, Algerians, Iraqis, Egyptians, Palestinians on the one side and on the other side, Kuwaitis, Omani, Saudis, etc. Then as a consequence, pop culture productions started to mirror this diversity as some sort of an unforeseen consequence of an economic phenomenon, which was eras migrating toward the Gulf region. Uh, if uh, you allow, allow me to, to make a comment on the, what has been said, I think, uh, for example, in Istanbul, it's very interesting to, 
Uh, unfortunately, the pandemic uh, um, is, is not uh, a, a good context to, to observe uh, practices, <laughs> social practices. But uh, when I before the uh, the, the, pandem the pandemic, uh, uh, the epidemic, I, I went to the um, a bookshop, Arab bookshop here in uh, the, the the biggest Arab bookshop in Istanbul, and it's very interesting to see uh, how it it has been transformed into a Arab cultural pan Arab cultural uh, club. Uh, with uh, not only uh, because uh, of uh, um, formal organization, but because it uh, it um, it is a meeting point for uh, Yemenis, Syrians, Egyptians, and, and everybody uh, speaks in his dialect. I mean, uh, without uh, without uh, uh, meeting any uh, confronting any difficulties. But at the same time, when you come back to the or you, go, you, you go, come back to the to the social uh, networks. You 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 see that the, uh, there are some inter-Arab uh, social networks, but uh, uh, the tendency is to go through uh, is to go towards um, uh, national uh, networks. I mean, uh, between Syrian or between Egyptian, because they um, they share the same preoccupations. Above all, because of the context, um, because of their um, their interactions with the context are different from Syrian to Egyptian to Libyan, so. and there are uh, there are particular problems which uh, they are uh, the, the, the most confront, which are different from uh, one nationality to another, and I think that the the question of the context is very important here to also to 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 take into consideration for. Uh, Polyglossic um, relationship. I mean, <laughs> if we can define it like this, uh, in a way that, uh, and uh, it's true that uh, the uh, Arab media, um, uh, Arab media in general. I mean, uh, above all, the audiovisual media uh, recognize uh, uh, somewhere the, the diversity, diversity and plurality of the Arab scenes. I mean, in in, in incorporating. Uh, dialects and the expressions through dialects, but in the same time, what I wanted to to stress upon in my talk, and this is a uh, this is also a consequence of the um, of the defeat of the Arab nationalism. This is one of the consequences: the fact that uh, there is a recognition which is progressive and uh, with many difficulties, but uh, go through uh, above all uh, into the private re realm. Of the of the media scene, uh, recognition of the of the uh, linguistic diversity of the Arab world, of the Arab region. But at the same time, the Arab culture, as a whole, as a kind of a virtual foyer, as a kind of virtual center, um, <laughs> remains as a kind of objective. It is the objective of these Arab cultural foundations, Arab cultural policies, but without a clear existence. I mean, because the existence is a question of definition and this definition is contested, can be uh, contested and can be uh, also subverted. And, and so, the, but in the same time, it remains as a, a important factor for the elaboration of cultural diplomacy and also uh, of the role of uh, each constituent of the Arab uh, scene uh, inside the Arab region. So it's interesting to, to see this diversity, which can be reflected into the, the um, plurality in, 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 in dialect, dialect and in plurality in linguist, linguistic forms. And at the same time, uh, recognition of cosmopolitanisms, I mean, and at the same time, uh, the, the, the fact that the Arab culture as a, a logo, as a, as a, um, a sign of, uh, Something which is which can legitimize legitimize the uh, the political uh, the, the the cultural diplomacies uh, is still uh, uh, is still important. I mean, so there there is these two aspects which must be I think taken into co um, consideration. I mean, when when we say that okay, Arab culture, we can we must use the term Arab cultures. In, in plural, 
that's for sure. I mean, that's, that's for sure that the, 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 the local culture is very, uh, uh, very diverse and the, we cannot, uh, uh, but at the same time, there is a kind of a reference uh, um, to this Arab culture, which is still, still strong. And even many books were uh, written about Arab culture, about Arab society, without uh, um, using the plural. I mean, the Arab, uh, Arab culture, Thaqafa al Arabiya, al Mushtama al Arabi, Ilm al Ishtima al Mushtama al Arabi, etc., etc. Which means that the, sometimes the recognition of the Arab diversity is only um, in, inside the, the same country, uh, inside the Al Watan al Arabi, uh, what we said. But, it's a, uh, but one of the major uh, factor of these recent decades is the fact that the expression has been completely liberated uh, towards the recognition of the plurality of, uh, uh, of the Arab societies, um, above all in the, in the field of uh, on the real realm of the, um, of the linguistic diversity. I mean, it's no more a taboo to, to speak about it and to, to debate uh, about it. And uh, I think that also the Syrian case is very interesting because uh, um, after decades of uh, Ba'ath regime, uh, now there is, uh, I think, uh, um, completely uh, uh, reject and disapproval of all, all the constituents of what was uh, imagined, uh, imagined to be uh, the Syrian culture. And now there is uh, other debates about um, recognition of the diversity of the uh, Syrian society uh, through the recognition of Kurdish language, uh, recognition also of the dialect, but it will take more time than the other societies uh, because it has been um, uh, re enforced by the uh, political regime during decades. Thank you. Uh, I think that also ties in with what you were um, saying during your talk about the current police centrism, right? That is kind of the dependent of this uh, of this recognition of diversity. Uh, we have um, our next question is by Don Chatty, and it's actually um, a question that's more about sort of the internal um, face of this cultural pan-Arabism within uh, Gulf societies, because she is asking how does uh, this cultural pan-Arabism speak to the Bedouinization of heritage uh, in some of the Gulf states? Yes, yeah, sure, but, but uh, that's a very good point. Um, and a great, my greetings to Don Chatty. Um, the very good point because it is uh, also um, uh, revendication to, to revendicate the fact that we are um, uh, to, to, to do it uh, very in a, in a very sim simple manner uh, to be at the heart heart of the Arabism through this uh, Bedouin, Bedouin heritage and through the, the fact that uh, uh, all this Bedouin um, culture is at the heart of this, uh, of this Arab culture of uh, Arab heritage. That's, uh, that's for sure that there is a uh, a di direct link between Bedouinization and the process of uh, heritage um, with the recognition of the Bedouin heritage and the fact that it is uh, the, the link, the direct, uh, direct link also to the, to the Arab culture. And we can go through also the, the phenomenon of uh, Quranic message and uh, the fact that uh, the religious uh, dimension of this uh, Arabic culture in the um, anchored in the Arabian Peninsula, and that's. Uh, but at the same time, um, what is interesting, and it's for that that I, uh, I wanted to tackle the tackle the um, to deal with the the topic of the cities. That in the same times so when we see the uh, the process of uh, urbanization in the, in the Arab Gulf uh, cities, uh, we see that there was not. Uh, uh, really, uh, 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 I mean, consideration about uh, uh, urban heritage uh, with the destruction of many uh, places, old places, and um, in, in uh, Arab cities in the, in the Gulf. And so, and so, the 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 what is interesting is uh, is the equilibrium or the balance between the uh, material and immaterial heritage. And so um, it's interesting to see also the, uh, in the different Arab societies uh, that the balance or the equilibrium between material and immaterial 
uh, heritage is very different from one country to another. And so, um, and the, the, the fact that the process of uh, heritage process in the, in the Arab, uh, in the Gulf uh, countries, uh, pass through the, uh, some elements of the Bedouin uh, heritage, um, forgetting also some elements of, the, uh, ur of their urban societies with their own diversity, or um, not forgetting, but perhaps uh, uh, taking it uh, to, uh, on a secondary uh, way, um, means, that, um, means also that uh, uh, now they are also constricting or building another cultural heritage, uh, material cultural heritage, but from coming from outside uh, their own societies. That's very interesting to see the equilibrium because between what is going from outside their own, uh, but is appropriated and what is coming from uh, the, their own societies and what is selected from their own societies. Thank you. Um, the next question we have is by uh, Yasmina Abida, who is one of our students at uh, NYUAD. And uh, she's asking about the role of Turkey. And I hope this will um, prompt you to, to speak a bit more about your current uh, research. Um, because you, you've discussed a lot um, Turkey's involvement with the, this Arab or the recent involvement of Turkey within this, uh, this Arab cultural field. And you've talked about the presence of uh, Syrian and, uh, and Yemeni intellectuals in, in Turkey as part of this. Uh, this aspect, but she's asking if um, it could also be due to the rise of political Islam in uh, in Turkey, and if it can be seen as a counter reaction to when uh, to the foundation of the, of the Turkish state and when it secularized the nation and removed signs of, uh, of Arab identity. That's so for sure that the Arab presence in uh, in um, in Turkey is completely uh, completely linked, uh, directly linked with the with the, the political context and the political affirmation of the Ankara regime towards the Syrian revolution. But because it, um, since uh, 2012, uh, 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 hundreds of thousands of Syrians uh, went to, to Turkey, and now there are more than, uh, there are around uh, 4 million Syrians in, uh, in Turkey. There are perhaps between 20,000 and 30,000 of uh, Yemenis in Turkey. Well, we say that we are, there are around uh, 50,000 uh, Egyptians, 700,000 uh, of Iraqis, there are Libyans also. And all these communities are linked uh, to Turkey because of the, of the war or the political situation in their countries. And because also of the um, alliance, the political alliance between Ankara and Doha uh, regimes. I mean, that's uh, for sure that there is a political context which is very, um, really important in this presence. In the same time, we have also uh, many tourists uh, coming from the Gulf um, in, in, uh, in Turkey, in Istanbul in particular, or uh, people who are uh, coming from the Gulf or other parts of the Arab world, Arab region from Morocco to, to Iraq and coming to, to, to Turkey also to invest. And there are many uh, businessmen coming uh, or to invest in the, in, um, in apartments and things like that. So there is a, a complex image of the Arab presence and diverse image of the Arab presence in Turkey. So we cannot, um, I mean, uh, simplify it, I mean, uh, through uh, only the political uh, area. But in the same time, we have uh, since 2000, and I think we say 13, 14, uh, the constitution in Turkey of uh, Arab cultural and media scene with the uh, opening of many television channels. These are, for example, three television channels, uh, or, uh, three Yemeni television channels, two or three television, uh, Syrian televisions, uh, three or four uh, Libyan, uh, uh, three uh, Iraq, um, Egyptian uh, channels. Um, the the, the terri 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 type image or caricatural image of this presence is to say that all are belonging to the uh, Muslim Brotherhood movement. And to say that there is a, this a kind of a, a force, a political force behind all these uh, media scene, which is not completely true because uh, many of these, uh, uh, of these institutions are not linked at all with the Muslim Brotherhood uh, movement. And I can say that, but we have always a political uh, dimension in it. Um, as, for example, I will take the, 
I, I think that the Syrian uh, example is very uh, uh, interesting because we have okay, a presence of the Muslim Brotherhood in some parts of this media scene, Syrian media scene. But most importantly, we have the, the influence of the, what I was uh, speaking in my, during my talk, uh, the Fadaat media, which is uh, headed by, um, which is in the re realm of the empire of Hazmi Bishara in Qatar. And for that, media is very present in, in, in Turkey through uh, some institutions like um, TV Syria, uh, like also the, one of the most important Syrian center for research, uh, Haramud Center for Research, which is not, they are not linked at all with the Muslim Brotherhood, but they are linked with the policy, uh, cultural diplomacy uh, of Qatar. And, um, uh, and, there are, uh, and also the, the bookshops that I, uh, I mentioned earlier is also linked to uh, Fadat Media. So uh, we have uh, so a strong influence of the political uh, realm in this media scene, Arab media scene, but in the same time, we have also um, the opportunities for many uh, Arab intellectuals and writers and uh, uh, journalists also to work uh, in Istanbul and to, to find also opportunities, job opportunities. So we, we say that there are around 2,000 and 3,000 Arab journalists uh, in, uh, in Turkey, which is not really true because most of them are not really uh, journalists, but perhaps uh, media professionals. And, uh, uh, and, and most of them are, are, have no link with any institution, uh, political organization. I mean, they are, uh, most of them are here to, to find jobs. And, and I think that uh, uh, we have also another phenomenon which is very interesting to, because we were speaking of the, speaking of the, the fact that uh, uh, cities must uh, have a cultural sedimentation through time and through the installation of uh, uh, um, expressive specialists, uh, what I was saying before. And in Turkey, we, you, we have a, a phenomenon of creation of, um, the phenomenon of the creation of uh, many interstitial spaces cultural and interstitial spaces uh, through uh, meetings, uh, through encounters between Turks, uh, at, uh, Turks uh, and Arabs uh, in Istanbul uh, or in Gaziantep or, or other uh, places in Turkey. Um, for example, in the field of uh, translation, the field of theater, in the field of lit literature also. So it's very interesting to see that uh, a new Christ cultural crit crystallizations uh, 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 becoming to appear in Turkey, but is not sure how long it will last, because as in the case of the Gulf cities, um, these kind of uh, cultural encounters, uh, uh, these cultural, cultural encounters are also linked to political and uh, political context and political situations and political circumstances. So it's very hard to to see how it will uh, evolve in the near future. Thank you very much. Um, we have to wrap up, so I'm going to link. Uh, there are two questions. The last two questions actually um, tie in well with each other. So we have one question about um, from Katia Altawil, which is saying that speaking of Arabic cultures in plural, uh, can we speak of Arabic novels in plural as well? And the second question is, is by uh, Dana Winner and is uh, basically uh, asking, uh, are there actually readers? Uh, in the sense that she's saying that her observation uh, indicates that reading uh, is at a low level and so how important and influential can written Arabic be if people do not read? Uh, and she's mentioning that she knows quite a few Arab writers who prefer to write in English. Uh, can you repeat the first question, please, of Katia? Uh, it was about, shouldn't we speak of Arab, Arabic novels uh, in plural as well, if we are speaking about Arabic cultures uh, in, in, in the plural? Uh, thank you for these very interesting questions, but I don't, I'm not sure that I can answer them because it's, uh, they are very complicated. But um, I think that, for example, I was mentioning the fact that the Arab novels um, and I was quoting uh, uh, the Saudi, Saudi anthropologist uh, Bakader and, and Hassan Rashid, uh, Moroccan anthropologist, uh, seeing, uh, uh, conceiving uh, um, the, the Arab novels as a source, source for observation of societies. Uh, it means that the, these Arab novels also um, uh, bear 
uh, also their own societies. I mean, there is a there is a kind of um, um, testimonies uh, uh, aspect of uh, these Arab novels. Uh, there is also uh, a negative also way of considering these Arab novels as only through their documentary value, which is the case in, uh, for example, in France or other uh, parts of the Western world when um, some Arab novels are, are translated only because of their documentary value as if they express the, the, the Arab societies. I mean. And sometimes uh, their author, authors uh, become the uh, speakers of the Arab societies. We see, for example, and when some, something uh, happened in their society, uh, the, the choice is to uh, ask them questions about what is happening in their society uh, instead of uh, um, asking uh, uh, social scientists from this society. So uh, there is uh, this also negative uh, um, aspect of the uh, of the interest to the Arab novels, but I'm sure. But it's true that uh, more and more I, I, I can, for example, speak about the uh, Yemeni novels, which I am I'm now uh, observing. Uh, I'm trying to 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 read more. Uh, most of what I could from uh, uh, Yemeni literature, that they are more and more interested by their, uh, um, they are more and more dealing with um, um, social realities and taboos of their own society. And there is a, a kind of transfer from the political re realm to the literary fiction um, uh, in the way of dealing uh, of uh, social realities and social uh, problems. Uh, and that, so I think that we can perhaps uh, uh, speak of uh, Arab novels uh, in, in plural and not on uh, and singular. Um, uh, concerning the readers, is it true? That it is true that uh, uh, when uh, when I was doing my research on publishing in Beirut, um, um, most of the publishers were always complaining of the fact that there are less readers than before. That before we were uh, printing uh, 3,000 copies and now we are printing only 1,000 copies. That's, uh, that's for sure. But in the same time, they are still <laughs> publishing. So, uh, and uh, even through the piracy uh, processes, which are operations which are very uh, constant in the Arab publishing scene, they are still publishing and there are more and more publishers. I mean, when you, you see the numbers of publishers in Morocco, uh, perhaps uh, 30 years before and now, you see the, an increase of publishers. Um, before the 90s in Syria, there was only uh, um, some uh, private publishers and it was a state that was uh, um, the main publisher. And now you have uh, more than 300 publishers. Uh, now the, under these circumstances, it is sure that the uh, Syrian publishing scene is uh, really, really uh, 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 confront, uh, uh, face a lot of uh, difficulties. But uh, uh, in Iraq also, in Iraq also, there were uh, me, the, uh, most of the Iraqi publishers uh, until 2003 were outside the, the country because it was very hard to publish uh, freely in, uh, in Iraq. And now it's still hard, but uh, I mean, there are more uh, Iraqi publishers inside uh, Iraq. So there is really a flourishing of the publishing scene all over the Arab countries. Um, it means it means that there are more readers than before. I think uh, it means that there are more uh, readers than before, uh, considering also the demographic factor. Even if this demographic factor perhaps has less um, uh, effect than perhaps in other parts of the world, and be, and and we can see also that the, we can also recognize that the readership in the Arab world is less important than the other parts in the world. There are studies that have been conducted uh, on this, uh, on this uh, fact, but uh, still uh, it is a kind of um, a way of expressing the intimate. It is also a kind of uh, sometimes also a, a stance which is made to, uh, to, 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 to have the recourse or to have use of, uh, reader, uh, of uh, reading books uh, to to have uh, it is part of so uh, of a lifestyle for many, which is a kind of alternative uh, lifestyles. And uh, for example, the blooming of uh, 
uh, of uh, of translations in some of the of uh, publishing houses of the girls societies is also a way to express polit politics uh, through this means of uh, translating i remember some of the publishers i i met in uh, in bahrain or in kuwait um, in bahrain and in oman or uh, elsewhere who were also focusing on translators uh, translation, sorry, uh, in, um, to express also their own uh, values through uh, uh, foreign author. So I think that the publishing scene uh, reveals also um, um, uh, ways of investing in the cultural field without uh, many money, without having a lot of uh, res uh, economic resources. That's, that's for that, that it is still an alternative way of uh, investing in the cultural field. Thank you. Uh, I think this is a perfect, perfect note to conclude this conference, which, wishing that the conference will make its way into a publication and that it will be read. Um, thank you very much, uh, Frank, for this conference. Thanks to all the panelists and keynote speakers for the fascinating papers that we heard uh, throughout the th three days. Thanks also very much to the NYUAD Institute team, Gila, Omar, uh, Manal, and Nora for all the work they did around this conference. And thanks to my co-organizers, Frederick and Clio, who will also say a word. Well, I just say uh, thank you, uh, Frank, for this uh, fantastic uh, ending keynote for the whole conference. And uh, in the name of CIFREPA, uh, thank you for all of you who attended. Uh, this conference and for everybody who participated and helped in turning this project into a reality. Goodbye. Thank you very much. I would like also to thank everybody in the name of uh, Sorbonne uh, University Abu Dhabi. I actually would love, love to welcome all of you in Abu Dhabi and, and that we can have all of this discussion on NYUAD and SUAD as the campuses, but hopefully next time when everybody is um, vaccinated and safe, uh, and we will do a second round uh, about culture made in Arabia. But in the meantime, thank you all very much for participating, and um, we'll sure uh, keep in touch for the future research and, and debates um, that we need to continue and push further. Thank you very much.